Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at this idea of rate calculations for enzyme activity. And this builds on the previous video on enzymes. When we're talking about the rate of reaction, for any reaction, but also for enzymes, we have to include a time factor. So it involves a time factor when we're talking about rate. So there's usually some sort of change over a period of time. So we need a timer often to measure rates of uh, reaction. And one example in which we can use a rate of reaction or measure a rate of a reaction is by looking at some apparatus that might look like this. So here we've got a flask and in our flask we've got an enzyme controlled reaction and in this example we've got some gas being given off and that gas will pass through our little tube there and pass into this piece of equipment called a gas syringe and that gas syringe will open up and measure the volume of gas produced. So we have a measure of volume that would usually be in centimeters cubed. And in fact, if we wanted to have a rate uh, for this reaction, we might have a rate measured in centimeters cubed per minute. That's one example of how we might measure the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. Here's another example. So this is sometimes when we have a color change because of an enzyme. So we can use some sort of indicator that might uh, change color. We've got our enzyme reaction going on in the tube and over a period of time, in this case, it's gone colorless. So we've got a color change and we can measure the time taken for that color change to happen. So the rate here would be the time taken for the color to change. And that would vary depending on the conditions, usually measured in seconds, but it could be in minutes as well. And here's another example. So in this example, we've got our enzyme reaction again going on in our conical flask. There is some gas being produced and because there's some gas being produced, we are going to have a reduction in mass of the reaction mixture. Okay, so we're measuring the mass, and over time, that mass will decrease because there's gas being produced. And that could be measured in a unit, for example, grams per minute. Another fairly common example is shown here. So in our little measuring cylinder, we've got a solution called hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. And we've got a sample of some tissue, in this case it's some liver, but you can use other tissue as well, even plant tissue in fact, like potato. The important thing is that the tissue contains an enzyme, and in this case it's an enzyme called catalase, which causes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide and produces a gas, in fact produces oxygen, and that oxygen gas will produce a froth on the top of the mixture, their reaction mixture. So that froth, we can actually measure the height of that froth over a period of time. You can measure the volume, but you could also measure, for example, the height of a froth with a ruler over a period of time. So height of froth. And that could be measured, for example, for two minutes, depending on how quickly the reaction goes. Okay, so that's another example of how we might measure the rate of an enzyme-controlled reaction. So there's just four examples here that are fairly common. Now, what if we were to actually have a go at plotting some of these results? What would they look like on graphs? We can have a look at some sketch graphs. So if we look at our first example where we had enzyme, an enzyme-controlled reaction producing a gas, we can measure the gas produced over time. So that would be volume of gas over a period of time. And you can imagine it might look something like this. As time goes on, the volume of gas increases until the reaction stops. And then we've got our maximum volume of gas produced, there the reaction has stopped. No more gas is being produced. You could do this again, experiment again, for example. You could raise the temperature. So imagine that was 20 degrees. We could raise the temperature to maybe 30 degrees, and the graph would look like this. It would reach the maximum, same as before, but in a shorter amount of time. That could be, for example, at 30 degrees. If we had a cooler temperature, again, it would reach the same maximum, but it would take a longer amount of time. As long as we keep the enzyme and substrate concentration the same, this could be the results that we would get. If we're measuring the mass loss, so there's our reaction mixture, and we've got some gas being given off, as you can imagine, the mass would decrease over time, and eventually that would also flatten out too when the reaction stops. So the flat part of the line there, that's when the reaction stops, and no more mass is being lost. And again, we could repeat this again at a higher temperature, and we would lose mass, but we would lose it a bit more rapidly because the enzyme 
reaction is going more quickly. And if we had a cooler temperature, it would flatten off at the same level, but it would take a longer amount of time. We could take a look at our final example with the hydrogen peroxide. So here we have some liver tissue or other type of tissue that we might have in a solution of hydrogen peroxide. And we could measure, for example, the time taken for the froth to reach five centimeters. So let's just put that label on our graph to see what it would look like. We've got temperature along the bottom and there we go, time taken on the y-axis. And at a low temperature, we would probably have, in fact, we would have a, a very slow reaction. So it would take a long time for the froth to reach five centimeters. And at a high temperature, it would also take a long time as well because of the denaturing of enzymes. The graph would look something like this. In fact, if we had a very high temperature, if we took it to a higher temperature, so we've got very high, for example, in the region of 50 degrees C or plus, or higher than that, it might be actually too long. In fact, the time might be so long, it would be too long to measure. In fact, the reaction might not happen at all. But this quickest time here would be around about 35 degrees centigrade. And this is where it took the least amount of time to reach five centimeters cubed because the reaction was the fastest. Okay, so just a few examples of how you might measure the rate of enzyme controlled reactions and what the graphs may look like. Remember, if you're presented with some of these in the exam, look very carefully at the axes to understand what kind of graph you might get. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.